Hello and welcome to the section 6.1 lecture today. Today we're talking about algebraic expressions. So just kind of breaking down what that means a little bit. Algebraic is sort of our start to algebra. Um, and then expressions are a key piece of, <coughs> of, uh, of algebra as sort of a starting building block. And, and sort of the way that I break that down is um, if we think about what expression means, now expression has a lot of different meanings, but uh, in the sort of English language idea, an expression is like not a complete sentence. Um, and that's, that's kind of what makes it, uh, makes it a building block of, of the English language is that it's not a complete sentence, but it's a, a, a solid enough thought to sort of get you get you started. And uh, algebraically or mathematically, expressions are the same thing. They're, they're not a complete sentence, but they're a good building block. They're a good starting, uh, a good starting piece of what we're doing. Okay, um, so we're going to start with adding and subtracting. Uh, let's look at our first uh, our first little example here. But at the at the top it says you can use the properties of addition along with the distributed property to add and subtract algebraic uh, expressions. I will say that it does work to use the distributed property, but it's one of the most commonly kind of overlooked things that you do when you're dealing with expressions. We we teach it and we're going to teach it here. And then, uh, and then most of the time we're just going to kind of accept that those uh, that that those things happen. So let's let's go ahead and get and get looking at the first example. It says Kyle and Jill paid per project. Jill paid a product uh, project fee of twenty five dollars plus ten dollars per hour. Kyle paid a project fee of eighteen dollars plus twenty four dollars per hour. And we want to write an expression to represent how much a company will pay to hire uh, to hire both to work on the same project uh, for, sorry, to work the same number of hours on a project, okay? <clears throat> so in essence, we're combining these. And it says on step one to write the expressions for how much the company will pay each person. We're gonna let H represent the number of hours. So we have, we have H here at number of hours and over here at number of hours as well. And we, we come up with these two expressions, that's what these are, by looking at the fee, the project fee, and then the, um, the hourly rate. So Jill had $10 per hour and Kyle had $14 per hour times the number of hours. And we're gonna add these expressions. So they do sort of look uh, look over that idea of distributive property, but we'll take a look at that in, in this step two. It says add the expressions to represent the amount of uh, the amount the company will pay to hire both of them. So we're, we've got our two expressions, and a lot of times you might see these in parentheses, just to kind of understand that this is Jill's and this is Kyle's. We use what's called the commutative property to move things around. When we have addition, we can move things around. So immediately we think about dropping those parentheses. And then I want to get my numbers together and my variables together. So we switch these two to give us this line here. And then they do what they call combine like terms, which is totally okay. And this is where there's a hidden distributive property that people often overlook. And, and not to say that you need to, but sort of where this comes from is if I have 10 H's plus, uh, oops, not 24, that's the final answer, plus 14 H's, what makes this work mathematically is since these are both multiplied by H, I can pull that H out and say it's 10 plus 14 with an H on the outside. Well, since these two are just numbers, I can just add them. 10 plus 14 is 24 times H. So that's what gives this, and that's the hidden distributive property, or sort of undoing the distributive property 
uh, that's in that problem. But I'm fine if we just look at if I've got you know 10 times h and 14 times h. It makes sense that that's 24 times h. Okay, so the company is going to pay 43 dollars plus 24 h dollars to hire both Kyle and Jill, and the 43 just came from 25 and 18 added together. Um, you, it says you can read directly from the expression uh, 43 plus 24H that you cannot read directly from the equivalent expression. But what can you read um, that you can't read directly from the equivalent expression? Um, this. What we're looking at here is uh, that, I guess, specifically what can and can't you read. Um, number one that the uh, the project fee for both of them is uh, $43. <clears throat> and number two, the hourly, the hourly wage the cost per hour is going to be $24 Oops. for both of them. That's, that's what we can see from the, the simplified version that we couldn't see, at least not right away, uh, from the non-simplified version. All right, then we've got some year turn problems that definitely pose a little bit of a challenge. Uh, we've got some fractions involved and things like that, fractions and decimals. But we're going to do things the same way. So we're going to look at 3x plus 1 half plus 7x minus 4 and 1 half. And so automatically I'm dropping the parentheses. Okay? And when I drop those parentheses, I, I, so I should say that I can drop those parentheses because it's addition here. Um, I can just straight drop the parentheses, not worry about it. Um, and I'm going to sort of commute, uh, commute these things, move them around, get my X's by X's and my numbers by numbers. There we go. 3X and 7X is 10X. And then 1 half and negative 4 and 1 half is just negative 4. So you can think of this as adding these things together. Um, what I typically think of, you might have heard me say it, when I'm looking at this, this piece right here, I'm thinking of this as a positive one half plus a negative four and one half. And I'm really just thinking about combining those, th those two things together. And thinking, what do I get when I push those two things together? Well, my positive one half cancels out the, the negative one half that's on the negative four and a half. And so I'm left with just negative four. Okay. But I do that all the time, even with the three X and seven X. I said, I've got three X's, I've got seven X's. How many X's do I have when I push them together? Okay. I've got 10 in the end. So 10 X minus four. Okay. This next one here is subtraction. Now subtraction hides very sneakily uh, another round of distributive property. So first off, I have uh, I have this first one that I'm just going to rewrite. So negative 0.25x minus 3. And now I have a negative 1 hiding out here, hiding out in front. Okay, And maybe I would even think of this a little bit further as a Again, I, I, I don't like subtraction, so I'm going to think about addition. So I'm thinking it's like, uh, sorry, it's like adding a negative one times all this. Okay, so there's the, the hidden distributive property that I have to distribute that negative throughout the rest of it. So I'm going to rewrite this as addition, even though I'm probably just going to have a negative here. Negative one times uh, 1.5 is negative 1.5x. 
and negative 1 times uh, 1.4 is going to be a plus negative 1.4. So there we go. So now I have my four pieces that I want to combine. I've got my x's and x's and my numbers and numbers. Probably the best thing to do is to get those kind of right next to each other. And again, it is important to think about these as all separate pieces and even this piece here as instead of minus three, think of this as plus a negative three. And the reason for that is that I can't commute subtraction. Subtraction doesn't commute. But you can get around that if you, th if you switch it to adding a negative because you can commute with addition. So I can switch these around and now I'm going to have negative 0.25x plus negative 1.5x. A lot of negatives in this problem. Plus negative 3 plus negative 1.4. Okay. And so now we're just, again, thinking about that, mashing those things together. I've got negative 1 fourth x plus negative 1 and a half x. Uh, how many x's do I have? I have negative 1.75, 1 and 3 fourths x's. <clears throat> and then a negative 3 and a negative 1.4. I combine those. I can say plus here or minus, it doesn't matter, but um, just depends on what you do next. So plus a negative uh, 4.4 is what we get there. All right. But it would have been just as, just as good to write that as, some would argue better, uh, negative 1.75x minus 4.4. Either one of those two answers would work. Either plus the negative 4.4 or minus a positive 4.4. Next piece we have is using the distributive property. So now we're really going to get involved with it. It says you can use the distributive property to remove parentheses from an algebraic expression like 3 times x plus 5. Or you might say 3 times the quantity x plus 5. That's how we would say that if we were trying to verbally communicate this. Um, use things like the quantity of um, to represent parentheses. All right, it's sometimes called simplifying or expanding the expression. Multiply the quantity in front of the parentheses by each term in the parentheses. So this turns from 3 times the quantity x plus 5 into 3 times x plus 3 times 5. So again, a visual way is that I want to think about this little rainbow of I'm taking that three, multiplying it by the X and multiplying it by the five. <clears throat> so in the example, it says that Mark is selling tickets for a high school band concert. Uh, it says that the band gets to keep 25% of the money he collects from ticket sales to put towards new uniforms. So I'll run an expression to represent how much the band gets to keep. So they get to keep 25% of everything that he earns. So the first thing they do is write, uh, or they, they lay out some, some variables. Sorry, my brain's not working. It says let A represent the number of adult tickets and Y represent the number of youth tickets, which in problems like that, that's a good idea. Make it something that you can relate to or relate to the problem. Uh, so it turns out that the amount that, that he makes is going to be uh, found by $16.60 times A, or the, the cost of an adult ticket times the number of adult tickets, uh, plus the cost of a youth ticket times the number of youth tickets, so 12.2Y, and that's going to represent the amount of money that he collects. And so in, in trying to get to answering this problem, the band gets to keep 25%, so we're going to take 25% as a decimal, or 0.25. So 0.25 times the quantity of the amount he collects, 1660A plus 1220Y. And this is just kind of the verbal, where this came from verbally. 
It's 25% of the adult ticket sales and the youth ticket sales. So then we can use the distributed property. Now when I'm looking at this and using the distributed property, I'm going to take this 0.25 and multiply it to the 1660 and multiply it by the 1220. That's what they do here. And then just some simplification. And that can be done with a calculator at this point. Um, this one says analyze relationships instead of using the distributive property. Uh, could you have just found the sum of those two things and explain? Well, it's kind of a yes and no. As it's given, right? So what they're saying is could you have found this value um, and then and then multiplied it by 0.25? Well, you could have. But the problem is, the problem with that is, we don't know how to simplify this value. We can't simplify uh, that value, 1660A plus 1220Y. The important thing is, I can't combine those because I have A's and Y's. Those aren't the same thing, right? Those are different, different items. A is the, is the number of adult tickets and Y is the number of youth tickets. So I can't combine those together. Okay? And that's, that's why we can't, you should say no, we can't do that first um, because you can't combine those. Uh, but it turns out, which is interesting to know, it turns out that for every adult ticket that's sold, the band gets to keep $4.15 of the original $16.60. And for every youth ticket, $3.05. So that's a good thing. All right, next piece here, we have uh, 7 times the quantity 9K plus 6M. So you notice all these have two variables in them at least. Um, which isn't that big of a deal, but we want to distribute. We want to multiply the 7 by everything in the parentheses. 7 times 9 is 63. 7 times 6 is 42. And there we go. Same thing here. Multiply 0.2 by both things in the parentheses. 0.2 times 3 and 0.2 times 15. That may or may not be a good looking number. If you're unsure, as I am right now, I'm just curious, um, <clears throat> use a calculator. So 0 0.6 times B minus uh, 15 times 0.2 should be something like 3. Yeah, just check. So we have 0.6b minus 3c. Next part we're going to do is we're going to multiply two-thirds by each one of these in the parentheses. So we're multiplying it by 6, by 9, and by 21. Okay, So multiplying it by each one of those. So let's give ourselves a little room and look at this fraction multiplication-wise because fractions aren't great for calculators. So I'm multiplying two-thirds by six, or six over one. If you multiply straight across, you're going to get 12 over three. If you do some canceling out, you can make your life a little bit easier, uh, but it's not that bad either way. 12 over three is four. So we have 4e, two-thirds times nine, or nine over one. Let's do some canceling out, see what that looks like. That turns into a 1, that turns into a 3, and 6 times, sorry, 2 times 3 is 6, so we have 6F. And last one, let's look at 2 thirds times 21. Oops, not over 3, over 1. <clears throat> Canceling out, there's 1, 3, and 3, and there's 7, 3s, and 21. So this turns into 2 times 7 over 1 times 1, which is 14. So this will be minus 14G. 
Notice I keep the signs that they give me. The only thing that would change that is if I had a different sign on the number out in front. But I keep the signs that they give me and just do some distributive property. Distributive property. Okay, let's look at this last one, um, this little explore activity on factoring expressions. It says a factor is a number that can be multiplied by another number to get a product. So we're going to kind of be working on that backwards. It says to factor is to write a number or an algebraic expression as a product. Okay. So in other words, I want to I want to take this and find two things that would multiply to build it. Okay. And they they have us using algebra tiles. It's a little bit tough when we're uh, when we're here in distance ed, but we'll we'll make do kind of the best we can. Um, it says to factor 4x plus 8. Model the expression with algebra tiles. Um, we're going to use four positive x tiles. So we might look at it this way. The x tiles are usually the vertical bars. And we'll use four of those. And we need eight positive one tiles. So we'll use one, two, sorry, yeah, positive one tiles are usually just one unit. Five, six, seven, eight. Okay. It says to arrange the trying uh, arrange the tiles to form a rectangle. The total area represents four uh, x plus eight. So let's see if we can do that. Uh, bum, 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 bum. Let me get back to this. Let me give my four x tiles. And you might think of another way to do this, and that's okay. One, two, that's not really a square, but that's okay. Five, six, seven, eight. And so there we have a rectangle. Um, since the length multiplied by the width equals the area, the length and width of the rectangle are factors of four x plus eight. So we wanna find the length and width. Okay, well, here they do, I guess, the same thing that I did. Um, and so the width is just four positive one tiles. Okay, so the width is four positive one tiles or just positive four. The length is one vertical bar, one X tile, and it looks like two positive one tiles. So if we think about what that is, that's going to be an x plus 2. Okay. So what that means is this whole thing, in order to come up with the total area of width times length or length times width, whatever, um, is the number 4 from the vertical, or you know, I, think, I guess they're saying that's width, and then length is x plus 2. So it would be 4 times x plus 2. My area, 4 times x plus 2. Um, and then how could you use the distributive property to check your factoring? And this is an important thing that will always work for us in factoring, is that we can always redo and you know, treat this as a different problem, treat this as a new problem. And if I were to do this, I would say, well, I've got to, if I were looking at this and it said simplify, I'd say, okay, well, I've got to factor. I've got to multiply that four. I'm sorry, not factor. I've got to distribute. I've got to multiply that four by everything in the parentheses. So that's four times x plus four times two. And four times two turns out to be eight. So we get four x plus eight. Okay. It turns out that I'll say most of the time, if not all the time for now, um, distributive property Uh, distributive property sort of undoes factoring. So if you're unsure if your factoring answer is correct, then you can just 
Um, then you can just uh, use distributor property and see if it worked out. <laughs> the main idea is, or not the main idea, but I would say in practice, we don't have algebra tiles at the ready. Of course, you could draw them as I did on those problems, and that would be just fine. It's not always the best strategy, though. What you're really looking for, as we saw in this problem, when we saw this to begin with, 4x plus 8. 4 is a multiple of 4, and 8 is a multiple of 4. So the idea there is that I can bring a 4 out of each of those numbers. Okay, or think of like, think of working distributive property backwards. Okay, and that's, that's probably an easier way without algebra tiles to think about doing that. Is that 4 is sort of a, uh, a common factor to both 4 and 8. So let's see if we can find common factors in these problems. If you want to think about it, think about what is my common factor to each one of these, uh, each one of these problems. I have 2 and 2. Well, it sounds like 2 is a common multiple or a common factor, I should say, of both those numbers. So I can think about bringing a 2 out. And the way I think about this, since I don't typically use algebra tiles, is if I think about doing this backwards using distributive property, what's going to get me to this? Okay, that's one way to think about it. The other way is just if you're going to say, I'm going to take a 2 out, I'm going to do that then I would divide this by 2 and divide this by 2. 2 divided by 2 is 1, and 1x one is just x. 2 divided by 2 is 1. So I get 2x, 2 times the quantity x plus 1. Okay. And if I think about, okay, well, let's check our work. Let's see if that worked. 2 times x is 2x. 2 times 1 is 2. And there we go. We've got our, our original problem. So my answer here will be 2 times x plus 1. Okay, Common factor in both 3 and 9. Oh, I'm lagging around a little bit. That's no good. Common factor of 3 and 9 is, maybe that's the issue. No, 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 we're just, we're just having a good time here. Okay, I think at least that part's good. Yeah, I think we're good now. Common factor of 3 and 9 is 3. 3 divided by 3 is 1. 9 divided by 3 is, sorry, 9 divided by 3 is 3. And again, you could check your work. I'm not going to right now, just in the interest of time. And these are all very similar problems, which is kind of a fault of them. Um, so... We'll look at some other problems later on, but for now, we're going to be stuck with these. 5x plus 15, those are both multiples of 5. So I can take out a 5. 5 divided by 5 is 1. 1x is just x. Uh, 15 divided by 5 is 3. Okay. So I'm just, I'm just doing distributive property backwards. Uh, 4x plus 16, both have a factor of 4. Four, time, or 4 divided by 4 is 1. 1x is just x. 16 divided by 4 is... Sorry, 16 divided by 4 is 4. I was thinking. Okay. Like I said, we'll get more practice at that, but that is actually the end of today's video. We need to end it off with a... Good old code word. And our code word today will be factor. It's going to be a big, uh, a big word that we're going to use in the next little bit. So we're going to stick with that. All right. Hopefully you have gotten something out of this. If you have any questions, feel free to let me know. Otherwise, we will see you in class. Have a good day.